Good morning students of class 10. Welcome back to the online classes now. Let's do economics today. Sectors of the Indian economy. And we have already started. In our country we have different groups of people who work in different sectors. Primary sector, secondary sector and tertiary sector. So we have uh, studied in our previous class primary sector related to or connected with the natural resources such as farming and mining and secondary sector is a manufacturing sector the raw material are processed and produce final goods that is processed goods goods are processed that's a secondary sector and here the values are added raw material the value of raw material is low and the after processing the final product its value is in added increased and the territory sector is also called the sec service sector we have learned uh, in our previous class now here here comes another question how do we calculate how much goods and services are produced so now here comparing the three sectors there are certain ways and methods to compare the three sectors which sector is producing uh, or dominating which is the dominating sector how much goods and services are produced by each sector how do we compare there are certain methods now here according to economists comparing the three sectors the various production activities production activities takes place in three sectors primary sector production activities secondary sector production activities se territory sector service sector the services are produced so the various production activities goods and services in the three sectors produce a lot large number of goods and services in a country in a country like india or every country we can say large number of goods and services are produced number two to produce goods and services to produce these goods and services a large number of goods and services to produce them a large number of people are engaged they work so to produce goods and services a large number of people are employed they work in the farm they work in the factory industry they work in a territory sector in the banks and uh, uh, offices and, and so on various territory sector transport so a large number of people are employed now the question arises now here is a question how much goods and services are produced how much goods and services produce and how to compare how to compare them which sector produces more than the other which sector produces more than the other even the number of people are they varies in certain sectors more more people are engaged more people are employed in certain sectors less number of people are engaged so you can see there it's quite difficult to compare how do we know the total production in each sector how much goods and services are produced in each sector so the task seems task is the word calculating the task seems impossible and enormous enormous means very difficult and big and huge and difficult it seems quite impossible how to go and count how much goods and services are produced so it seems looks like impossible very difficult and quite big problem as so many people work as so many people work in their various sectors and so much of goods and services are produced in a country per year in a year the goods and services various type of goods and services are produced and number of people are also employed in various sectors in different numbers so it seems quite impossible and enormous the task is enormous the economist now the economist of a country suggests advises or suggests that the value of goods and services should be used rather than the actual numbers how many items are produced suppose a, a factory produces bottles how many bottles are produces it is, it is not to be counted 
so per year uh, how much value it has generated or the value of products is added not the numbers so the values of goods and services should be used rather than the actual numbers the value of goods and services in the three sectors are calculated the values of goods and services produced in a country per year is calculated and then added up the final goods the final product and services are calculated suppose let's talk about take the example what is the meaning of final product suppose a uh, a person buys a uh, floor from the shop at 8 rupees per kg suppose and he brings the floor mixes sugar and other items and makes biscuits suppose he makes biscuits four packets of biscuits with 1 kg of flour and each packet cost 50 ru 15 rupees that means the 8 rupees should not be counted it should be counted 15 rupees so with 1 kg of flour he made he made a biscuit four packet of biscuits 15 rupees each 15 into 4 60 rupees so you he purchase uh paying for 8 rupees now he is selling uh at 50 uh, 60 rupees so now the 60 rupees the four packets of biscuit he made he prepared and sold at 60 rupees that value is counted not 8 rupees the final product is that so in this way so the industrialists they purchase raw material that purchasing the the, the cost is not added so how much uh, what is the value of the final product that will be cal calculated and in the industries you know that the government uh, they um, charge taxes according to the goods and service goods produced even the number of people working in the industries are uh, mentioned in the register and uh, the government calculates so in this way the final goods and values and services of these a uh, value of final goods and services are calculated and added up and they can be con compared so between the three sectors so now we'll continue more in our next class so that's all for today you go through the online portal properly don't miss the classes so thank you very much for today so we'll meet in the next class and carry on our lessons that's all for today stay safe